Can you stop banging that door? It's called dramatic effect. Welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike and today we are going to be building something completely new. A new merchandise line with... <laughs> Printify. So we're going to be taking a completely new design. I have kind of concepted a target market that we're going to be targeting, which I'll explain to you in a little bit. But what we're going to be doing, we're going to be building from scratch a logo design. We're going to be over the next few episodes. I think we're going to do about four of these episodes. We're going to be taking this from concept. So we're going to be adding it to a product line. We're going to be choosing a platform to run this on. And then we're going to be trying to do some advertising to see where we can push this and see how it actually goes. So you and me, we're going to go through this whole process together. It's completely new to me. And let's see where it takes us. So first of all, before we go any further, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ding the bell, smash the like button again it's a lot of instructions but make sure you do all that because it really helps the channel get out to a wider audience and full disclosure on this one i have left an affiliate link down below because we're working with printify i've got that affiliate link if you just click that link before we sign up it would put back into the channel so i can make more of these and continue with the episodes or the merch episodes so make sure to click that link when you sign up. So how's this going to work exactly? Well, trust me, I asked myself the same thing. It was quite a brainstorm to come up with what sort of audience we wanted to target, what they call a niche. I don't like the word niche, but that's what we've got to call it. So coming up with the right audience to sell to. Now, I didn't want to go down the normal, let's make some doggy items. Now, don't get me wrong, I love dogs. Look at my boy. You can't love that guy. So basically, I went and had a look at the news, what was going on, and I found that cryptocurrencies was actually in the news a lot, whether it was going up or down or sideways or whatever it does. I found that it was being talked about a lot. Now, the platform that we are actually going to be launching all this on also accepts cryptocurrency. So there's two wins. And then within cryptocurrencies, you've got followers within followers. So you basically got people who follow Bitcoin, you've got people who follow Ripple, you've got people who follow Parachain, you've got all these different things. So that was a good audience to target. Now, going in a little bit further is that there's a lot of, I think, fun designs out there, which is really cool. And I just thought maybe we could make something a little bit more edgy and, you know, a little bit more edgy, a little bit more serious. And that's how I kind of find myself, hmm, this could work. So what we're going to be doing over about four episodes. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you know what happens. It may not happen straight after this episode because what I actually want to do is we are going to be designing a logo in this episode. Then I'm going to to basically try and design up some other designs based around the similar concept. Make sure to follow me on Instagram so you can see what new designs I'm going to come out with. I intend to try and get at least four or five together so that we can select these cool items from Printify and basically populate our website with them and then go and target these audience with some advertising. And we're going to walk through this. It's completely new to me. So this journey is going to be new as to you as it is new as to me. And that brings us to where we're actually going to start with the concept for this. Well, I've gone ahead and drawn a whole bunch of doodles. So I've just gone doodle nuts. Now I've come up with sort of this scale type of thing because it's crypt, crypto. I thought that was a cool play on the almost words. And then we've got like a little flower element that is coming out of his head. Where are we going to put this little icon? So I've actually broken it down from this concept over here. So this concept over here. And I've broken them down really into a simple, simple form of this right here. Now we're going to take it from here and we're going to put it on the computer. We're going to draw it. So let's go get this started. Okay, so we sat here in front of this illustrator. I've got my sketches in front of me so I know kind of where we're working to and from and where we're going. So first thing, let's get a new document open here. Going to head up, up to Illustrator, pull across to File and drop down to New and up pops our creation window. So I've got mine set on 500 by 500 and I'm going to click this mysterious blue button over here, almost called a green, click on that. And up pops this wonder of wonder, this artboard for us to start our creations. So let's see where we're going to start. We are going to start by just simply drawing one, two, three, four, four rectangles. So to draw rectangles, we're going to go over here and get this tool. This is the rectangle tool. I'm going to click on that. 
and I'm literally going to draw a rectangle somewhere like there. Okay. Now what I also want to do right before we go forward, I just want to get my rulers up. So you can just go Command R, or you can head up to View, drop all the way down to Rulers. That's this guy over here, and Show Rulers, and up pops our rulers. Now just make sure we really nicely into the center of our page, like that. We are going to go into Align. And I'm going to make sure down here it is aligned to artboard. So this last little section over here, let me pull it out so you can see there, aligned to artboard. Click on that. Okay. And then we're going to click on this one over here, which is horizontal align center. Now you'll see my object is going to, I'm just going to really put it off. If you click on that, pew, it goes to the center of the page. Then I can drag one of my rulers to the center of my object and you can see it says center. That's exactly where I want my ruler. Okay. We're going to drop that there. Let's just put that tuck them back in. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I'm just going to quickly swap around the, my colors. So at this moment, I've got a white fill and I've got a black stroke. So I'm going to switch those over really quickly. Shift X, poo. And then I'm going to take away this stroke color of white there. I don't want to stroke on this. I just wanted to be completely black. Let's duplicate this down a little bit. So I'm with my move tool selected or selection tool. I'm going to go over here and click on that or click V. Now I'm going to start click that, drag it, hold Alt and shift at the same time. And you can see I've got another copy of that. I'm, it's being dragged down. I'm trying to drag it sideways there. You see it's not going sideways when I'm doing that with my mouse. It's because I'm holding shift. Now I'm going to release it there. Drag this little up a bit to make it smaller. Okay, let's hold Alt and drag those two bits in. Okay, that will be the chin chin chin. Okay, let's just zoom in here. I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm just going to go Alt and drag that off to this side. No need for Shift this time. And I'm going to make that a bit smaller, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's cool. Now I need to rotate this 45 degrees. So a quick way to do, to do that, even with this mysteriously cool selection tool, I'm just going to hover right over the edge. And it gives me the, the rotating arrows. Hold Shift while doing this, because what will happen, it'll snap to my 45 degrees. So you see it says 315, that's 45 degrees. I'm going to snap it there and I'm going to bring it in to its chin somewhere around there, somewhere around there-ish, I suppose it'll be cool. Okay. All we're going to be doing is basically concentrating on one half of this for now. Okay. And you'll see why in a second. That jaw is probably going to have to come a lot smaller according to my drawing. Okay. So let's go up here. I am going to get my direct selection tool, which is A, or this tool over here. Okay, see it's a direct selection tool. We're gonna to select that one. And you can see what I'm gonna do with my mouse. I'm gonna drag over those two parts of the top rectangle bits there. So just there, and they become solid blue, solid blue. So you can see these ones here are white, and we're looking for the solid blues. And we've got these little corner radius things over here. I'm going to corner radius the hell out of this. So I'm going to click and drag and you can see what it's done. It's made a massive corner radius. Also, what I'm going to do while I'm in here, I'm going to break this perfect circle and I'm going to drag over that little point over there, hold shift and I'm going to drag it down just to give him more of that, I don't know, cone dome, not so cone dome, whatever, like a brick landed on his head. Now what I'm going to do is, let's see, I am going to, I'm going to widen this a little bit ever so slightly. Okay. I'm going to select both these sections over here and I'm going to head over to my Pathfinder window. And from a, my previous video, you'll know what exactly what I'm doing here. So if you haven't seen that, go and see it. I'll leave a link either up the top or down below. So you're going to click on this and then click on expand. And then you see those two objects are now joined. Now what I need to do is I'm just going to turn my page back here. I'm just going to see how I've done this. I am going to select this little corner over here with my direct selection tool. Remember, it's this guy up here, just opposite our sneaky selection tool. And I'm going to click on that little bit right there. Okay. And I'm going to round that corner. I am going to do the same for this corner over here. I'm going to round this corner. Okay. Just simply selecting those little nodes. And I'm going to click on those two. And I'm going to round those all the way in. So I actually forgot a bit here. So I'm going to Alt click and drag this in all the way into here. Okay. So Alt drag drag, make another copy of that. And I'm going to select both those objects and click on this Unite button again, and then click on Expand. Now I'm going to zoom right in here. I'm hoping this is going to work for me. Yep, it still will. I'm going to select this point right here. Click that, and I'm going to round all the way that I can. Okay, so now I've got this cool like, shape over there. So as I said, we were going to work on one side of this. Okay, so what I need to do is right now, I need to basically 
duplicate this half of it. The quickest way to do that for me, draw another rectangle, just M, get your rectangle tool up, this guy over here, and I'm gonna drag all the way right to the center of that line. You see how it snaps to my guide? Okay, select both your objects, making sure that this object, and just make it red, this object in red is above that black object there. Okay, make sure they're both selected, head over to Pathfinder, and punch it out. So now we've got one half. And the quickest way to duplicate this for me is if I just click on this, alt drag, and click it off to the side. Then I'm just gonna go O to get my reflection tool up, which is this tool right here. And I'm gonna simply click over here and drag off to my right. Click, drag, see that? Boom! Then I can take that little point right there and snug it right up to my line. Select both of those objects and unite them together. Now they an object as one. So now I've got exactly the same basic shape left and right. Let's do the teeth next. So what we need to do is, I like the idea of having these slightly rounded. So what I need to do is I'm gonna take this object here because it's the same shape as those two, this whole bottom section here, because I just kept on dragging it and dragging it and dragging it. I need to divide this into, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to divide this into seven. Illustrator has this wonderful function where you can just basically take my width. So this is my width over here. I can take it to the end of that and I say divide by seven. No more use for a calculator. So there we go. I can now drag this, snap it to my point over there. Okay, I can make this a little bit longer for the teeth, although I'm probably gonna tuck it in. And I can select exactly the same way as I've done all these rounded corners over here. I've got my direct selection tool. Click and drag and select those two points over there. Whoo, and round them. There's my tooth. Okay, and I'm gonna put it there. I'm just gonna get right to the edge of my, right, right to the edge of this object, like there. And I'm gonna click, Alt, Shift, Drag, and Snap and Drop. Then I'm gonna duplicate this. So Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. And I've got my seven teeth, seven teeth of the sea. And I'm gonna drag that up. Now, let's have a look and see how that is. Yeah, that looks cool. I think I actually wanna tuck it in a little bit more. So I've got my direct selection tool selected again. I'm gonna click and drag over that whole area there and just move those points up a little bit. Now, because I've got those teeth already set up there, what I'm going to quickly do is I'm gonna drag a selection over them. I'm gonna unite them, okay, unite them, expand them. I'm gonna duplicate these and use them for this bottom part of the jaw over here. So I'm gonna click and drag, okay? Do exactly the same what I did with these two bits here. I'm gonna flip that over, get your reflect tool, which is this guy right here, and reflect this up, okay? So I'm just gonna whoop and drag my mouse up when I had my tool selected. Then I'm gonna pop it on top of here. And let's just round the bottom of these two bits here. Whoop depending on how much we want them around, I'm thinking somewhere around there will be cool. And I'm gonna just tuck that in a little bit up like that. There we go, cool. So you can see how repetitive I'm getting with all these tools, just like same tools, same tools. I'm not drawing anything at this point. So keeping it nice and smooth. And with those two objects now selected, I'm gonna go over here to my Unite tool, click on that, expand, and I've got my teeth, rah, 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 and my top section, which I need to join those two bits up there, so Unite them. So I've got my top section, and I've got my bottom section, so I've got the basic outline of what we're looking at here. Now that we've got our outline, I'm actually gonna flip this around now. So let's go Shift X, and you can see I'm gonna change this fill to the stroke, pew, and I'm gonna make that white. Now what I'm gonna do is go up here to my stroke. I'm gonna click on that, so it goes to the outside. The stroke is now sitting on the outside of my design. It's not sitting on the inside, it's sitting on the outside. I'll show you in a second. So I'm gonna push my weight up. Now if that was sitting on this normal point, so in the center, you can see how much it encringes and look how, ugh, look how bad that looks. Ugh. So we're gonna select it all again and make sure it's sitting on the outside. Okay, so looking at this now, I think his head is a little bit too big. So I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit. And it's so easy to do. All I need to do is get my direct selection tool. So I'm gonna click and drag a marquee or a selection area over the top of that. Just get these two points here and obviously the top bit over there. Hold shift and drag them down. Yeah, now we're looking good. So just mm, let's leave them there for now. I think that looks okay. 
Right, let's just finish these teeth off a little bit here, give them a little bit more teethy look, I suppose we could say. I am going to just go in here. Now what we could do is we could, I'm going to go into wireframe mode here quick just to check something out. So that's command Y and you can see I've just going into wireframe. Now you may notice we've got this extra line over here, but it's actually just based off where this white meets the black right there where it says path. That's the line that is the actual only line. We've got a stroke on that. How, what I want to do is I'm going to get my pen tool, P. Okay, so P, I'm going to hover right over this little section here. So this is anchor, click on that, and I'm just going to draw straight up holding shift, making sure that is a straight, straight line. Okay, now the reason why I did that, I wanted that perfectly smack right there on that tooth mark right there. So you can see it's just hovering. If I take it out of wireframe, that's command Y, command Y, command Y, pew, 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 pew. Okay, so taking it out of that. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take this line, make sure it's selected. I'm going to head over here and give this a round cap. Okay, that's this middle one here. Click on that, round cap. And I'm thinking that's probably about the right width. Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. So mine is on eight point and I'm making it sort of the same width as this line I've got over here. Now one thing I always come across in designs, other people's designs, sometimes my designs, is you've got to be fanatical about your line widths. We could be sending our artwork to the best printer in the world and if your artwork isn't right, then it can't print right. So th this is an important step for us to make sure our line widths are the correct width for the thing we are printing on. So when we're schmoozing around on Printify and trying to select our perfect item, we've got to keep in mind that the line width matters when it's tiny and when it's big. So when this point here when I'm stressing uh, how I'm looking at the, my line widths and how thick they are, I'm kind of trying to keep in mind that the smaller item that I'm going to be printing on, yes we can come back later and we can change the line width if we're printing something huge and we can delve down those line widths and create a little bit more character to it. But right now my mind is on printing socks, it's printing iPhone cases and I think I'm getting my point across about line widths. So line Line widths, people, line widths. I am now going to take that and I'm going to drop it down somewhere. Let's take it to there. I think that, let's just have a look. Maybe it needs to come down a bit more. Yeah. So I'm going to actually get my direct selection tool and hover over that little point right there and I'm going to bring that down right to there. Let's have a look. Zoom out a bit. Yeah, that looks cool. We can probably take it down a little bit more if we need to. Right. Let's get that wireframe mode up again. Command Y. I'm going to hover right over my line where it touches at the top of my tooth over there. I'm going to try to get it more or less the same place. Click, Alt, Shift, Drag, and what to snap? Boom! It should snap right to that point there. See, so you've got those two little white arrows. It snapped. Then I'm going to release, and I'm going to, now I'm going to just move that across a little bit. I'm just going to go Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, and you can see it's placed it all in the same place. Come out of that wireframe mode, Command Y. And there are our teeth. Look at that. That's cool. Right, so with the teeth done, sort of, I'm going to select all of them. Okay, so just hold shift and select them. Pew, 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 pew. And I'm going to head up here to object and I'm going to go down to path and then go outline stroke. There's your cookie. I think that's a custom cookie I put in there for myself. But just click on outline stroke and click on that. And you can see now, if I go command Y, it's now given us this outlined view over there. Come out of that wireframe mode. And now what we can do is simply duplicate these. So select all of them again. Okay. And hit Unite. Get, get Unite and expand that. And I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift and click and drag this down to my bottom teeth. So now we've got our top teeth and our bottom teeth. Okay. That's cool. What I do want to do before we go any further, I want to expand this outline on here too. So exact same way we did these little parts in here. Yeah, I'm going to do the exact same for the top and the bottom part of our head. So select both of those items, go up to object, drop down to path and click on outline stroke. And we're going to now, when you actually go into wireframe mode, remember how we only had that one line? Poof, now we've got the two lines. So that's what I'm looking for. So we've actually got a white fill and a black fill. No longer a stroke. Okay. So we've got the teeth sorted. Now let's concentrate on, let's concentrate on this eye for a second. Okay. So with the eye, I am going to use the ellipse tool. So over here, you can just hit L or you can go over here where your rectangle tool was and drop down to ellipse tool. And let's just draw an oval shape. So any sort of oval shape. Let's just pick a shape. Let's go somewhere around there. 
and let's just draw another one of these so instead of drawing another one hold on alt shift click and drag alt shift click and drag and drag it somewhere around about there what I'm basically trying to do is if I just flip these over so shift X just to flip my stroke and my fill over I'm looking at this area here okay that's the area I'm looking for the key area the special area and I'm going to select both of those objects head across to Pathfinder and click on this intersect button so poof and there is my eyeball now let's take that okay and let's drag it here make sure it's centered and let's just change the shape of this a little bit that's why I wasn't too worried about how basically what shape we got there because I knew I was going to change the shape of this anyway and position it where you feel is right now you can see what I've done because of the center guide here I've made sure that that has dropped right in the center and I just scaled it left and right and up and down holding my alt so I'm scaling it same from both sides all the time okay keeping it nice and uniform now I'm going to flip that back over so shift X changing my stroke back to my fill and we've got our eyeball right there now to this eyeball we need to add okay that was the next stage you shouldn't be seeing that right now so now I want to add some eyelashes to go around this so to add these eyelashes I am going to basically I'm going to just close that window I'm going to be using that rectangle tool just to create a triangle so M for rectangle remember this guy over here and I'm going to just draw a square so hold shift click and drag and make a nice square make it nice in proportion then I'm going to take away one of these edges but before I did that I'm just going to rotate it quick go to a corner and hold shift whew, 315 aka 45 degrees let's rotate it there I'm gonna get my pen tool up so I'm gonna hit P okay that's my pen tool remember this guy right over here the real pen tool and I'm gonna go over this little note over here and I'm gonna click on that poof, and now I've made my own little triangle now for this triangle I am going to reshape this so I'm gonna get my direct selection tool okay click on that little note up there Whew, make that nice and big okay in fact, I'm going to really take it up like there. Then I'm going to select this and then hold down Alt and click and drag and make it a lot smaller. And hold down Shift at the same time, just keep it nice in proportion. Okay, so that's our one eyelash, I suppose we can call it. I'm going to go right to the center of this. So you can see where I'm selecting it on that blue dot right there. Click and drag, poof, into the center of my design. Okay, so I am wanting, hmm, I think about maybe five of these one two three four five yeah so what I want to do is I'm gonna make this guy this guy and this guy so you see I'm selecting the top the top and the top and I'm gonna hold down shift and just click and drag down so I'm making a shorter version of those guys now what I want to do is I'm gonna select all of those okay so I'm gonna select this one this one this one this one this one and this one and click and drag just down a little bit so it's just closer to the eyeball okay and I'm gonna bring this one a bit closer go to the edge of it so I go to the top edge is quick and easy and just rotate that slightly maybe I brought it a bit too close in so just rotate it I'm just trying to follow like the outline of the eye so I'm gonna do the same with all three of these drag it down rotate it okay and then drag it just into position a little bit better drag that one down rotate it that's it you know drag this one down rotate this one Whew. We could have used the blend option for this one, but we did not. Well, we'll just keep it like this and do that. Okay, so that's cool. Okay, so that will be the that side of it. I'm going to select all of these ones here. Okay, I want them to be a, probably a little bit rustic anyway. That's all I'm saying right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have all of those selected. I'm going to go over here to my Pathfinder tool and click on my Unite button. Click that Expand. Now I'm just going to simply hold Alt, click and drag, hold Shift, drag a copy to the side as we've done a lot of times before. Let's reflect this around. So I'm going to hit O or get your Reflect tool. That's that guy there. Click and drag and flip it off to that side. And so then I can just bring that in. And there we go. So we've got the top section done. Let's select all those three elements. So one element, two element, three element that's this side one two and three and select all of those click on the unite bring them all together so now that is one big top eyelash let's just duplicate that and flip it down to this side so i'm going to click and drag and drag it down here hit o 
and flip it up okay and just drag it into where I'm happy now I do want this to be perfect going around here so you can see how that one's a little bit up a little bit down a little bit up it's an easy way to do that I'm gonna select this I'm gonna say copy command C and I'm just gonna go command F if I just make this red okay and I'm gonna give it a red key line as well so click on that stroke there and click on red and I'm just gonna really pump this up, pump it up. So, oh, not down, pump it up, pump it up. And I'm gonna keep on going up until basically it's covering all of those areas. So you can see it currently is actually sitting behind all those elements. So we're gonna bring that all the way to the front, come up here to object, go to arrange and say bring to front. Click on that, Pew! it's in the front. Now I want to expand that stroke. So if I just go object, your path, outline stroke, Poof, now it's given us all those elements. If I just now ungroup all those elements, so Command Shift G or Object, ungroup, and then click on my shape mode over here, my Unite, click on that, click on Expand, and there we go. That's what I'm looking to do. Now select your black layer, okay, so the black eyelashes, so make sure those are united as well. So at this point, they are two objects, one object, two object, unite those guys, expand them, Select your red one, select your black one, and then minus. And you'll see, now we've got that nice perfect line going around everything there. And just for good measure, let's give them an eyeball. So what we need to do is let's draw another square. M to get your rectangle tool, shift click, and make a nice square. Let's rotate them again. I'm gonna zoom in here. And a quick way to do this, I'm gonna select this corner, select this corner. Get your scale tool which is this guy here s and i'm just going to go around about here you can see where my cursor is click and drag and i'm dragging off to my left hand side Ooh, somewhere around there and i'm making a nice diamond nice diamond and then go to the center of this click drag center poof so we can see it let's make it a white a nice white full and let's just scale that down yeah, scale it there Ooh, it's got a spooky eye right so the flower make the hole in the head so we're just gonna get our lips tool again, this guy here. Click right in the center of that. Okay, we're gonna have to change it to black fill, because there's a hole. Okay, that's cool. And it's gonna bring that down ever so slightly. Somewhere around there, give the gap a little bit wider. Okay, so that is that. Now what we need to do is create that flower. So to create the flower, I'm just gonna start up here, natural facts. So I'm gonna go P, get my pen tool up. Okay, that's this guy here. It's gonna draw a straight line right up. Okay, right up and make sure we've got our stroke here. So I'm just gonna flip those two around. Shift X, poof, got our stroke. And let's just pump that up. Do we want, yeah, so we said eight for that line there. So let's just keep it the same. So I'm keeping this width, the same width as this width over here, and the same width as those little teeth over there. So it's kind of all gelling together. Now what I need to do is I want to just create a circle at the top. So L to get your ellipse tool. Okay, remember it's this guy over here, ellipse tool. And let's just draw right here in the center, shift. Make it nice and round. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to go a little bit up. Okay, let's give that a white fill and just click that stroke there, not on the inside. Remember, it's in the middle at the moment. Let's put it to the outside. So line stroke to the outside. So it's gonna to go to the outside. Select that again. I'm gonna go Command C and then Command F. Remember, it just pastes it on top. I'm gonna to take off this fill this time. So I'm taking off that fill and I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift and click and drag that in so alt is just dragging the same from all directions and shift is making sure that it stays in proportion and this is where we're going to put our crypto logo whichever crypto logo we're going to be doing like magic i can just go Poof! i've recreated that logo so that's the bitcoin logo and i'm just going to pop that right in the center over here in the center mr vendor okay so there we go that is in the center. Now let's make some leaves. So whatever your logo is, you would just pop it in there. Okay. Now let's make some leaves. So M to get our rectangle tool up again. And I'm going to hold shift, click and drag, make another square. And this time I'm not going to rotate it or anything. I'm just going to hit P, okay, to get my pen tool. And I'm going to minus off this corner over here. 
poof, it's gone. Then I'm going to hit A, okay? And I'm gonna select this corner over here, like that, and just bring in that radius there. And simply, that is our leaf. I'm just gonna pop it right there, poof, make sure it snaps, and just drag it down to scale it down. Okay, that's cool. And we'll see where we're gonna pop it in a second. It's gonna drag a marquee over everything there and drag it in to our shape there. Right, so let's just add some color to this flower so we can actually see it. So let's select the petal and let's just see what color. I'm gonna make it this brownish goldish color here. Okay, so that's the fill. Now what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm gonna just get my direct selection tool and I'm gonna drag it. You can see the objects I'm dragging over, the stalk and those two little circles. And I'm gonna hit up here to object, go down to path and outline that stroke because I want those all to be fills now. So I can select that one, I can select this one, and I can select this one, and simply just change the fill color to our brown color there. And let's obviously just make another leaf. Another quick way you can actually do this is if you get your reflect tool, which is this guy here, okay? Just take this center point here and put it somewhere in the center of your design and hold down Alt and click and drag. I'm dragging it while holding Shift off to my left-hand side, and you can see I made that duplication. You can carry on doing it as the, as the Alt method. It's totally up to you. I'm just gonna cover up that little section there so there's no little black bit poking out there. It's either gotta be there, like be there, or not be there, okay? Especially when you're sending stuff off to print, you're in control of this side of things. So you make you make these tweaks so that you know exactly what you're gonna be getting, okay? Don't leave it to error. Okay, last little thing I wanna to add to this before we add a little bit of text is I'm just gonna add a little bit of detail down in this area here. So to do that, I think first what I'd like to do is actually drag an area selecting the black and the white of it like that and i'm going to go command two now what command two does it basically locks those objects so that i cannot select them now i'm going to go over here to this curvature tool not the pen tool the curvature tool and this c i'm going to go somewhere around about here ish okay and i'm going to hold down i'm not going to hold on anything i'm just going to click over here and that's probably a bit too far. I'm gonna click over here and then click over here. But when I click over here, I'm gonna hold down Alt. So you can see it gives me that little minus sign there. Holding Alt, click, come back, no Alt, okay. Hold down Alt, click, and then I'm just going to not hold on anything. I'm just gonna close the circle right there. Boom, okay. So it creates that nice curve that I don't have to try and bend with the pen tool or anything like that. Let's just make it black and let's just have a look and see if we're happy with that. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe a little bit down, I think. So I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit, somewhere around there. Just trying to get the flow of that a little bit better there, but that's cool. Let's duplicate this straight onto this side. So just switch on my middle guide there quick. You probably didn't switch yours off. And I'm going to use my flip method. So I'm just gonna move this little one right to the center, right there. Hold on Alt Shift, pew, and it goes right into place. Look at that. Okay, cool. Quickly add in some text. So hit T to get your text tool up. And let's write in some text. The C-R-Y-P-T-O Cult Co. Full stop. Okay, cool. So let's just put that. I'm gonna do this over a few lines. So I'm gonna go with the Crypto Calco. So three lines. And because this graphic is so so solid, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, for the logo side of things, I'm gonna actually use a quite a solid style of font. So I'm gonna use, I think this is a good one, nice and thick and heavy. So it's gonna print well on the small little items. If we were to print this onto something a little bit thinner or a little bit bigger, then we could adjust that font, but keeping it sort of the same. So what I wanna do is I need to scale this up. So you can see I'm going to the corner there. I'm just holding shift and I'm dragging up. I'm gonna bring those leading down, okay, closer together. So I'm heading up here where it says leading and I'm gonna scroll that down, not obviously too much, somewhere around there-ish, that'll be cool. Let's just convert that to outlines quick. So up to type, down to create outlines, click on that. So you, see, so you can see it's no longer a graphic, it is actually outlines now, which is what we are wanting. And just for fun's sake for now, I'm gonna make that brown. Okay, cool. So that would be a cool like horizontal version. Let's quickly knock up a vertical version. Just unlock them so you could go object and unlock all. Okay, and that is gonna unlock everything. So that's just gonna drag them into this side and I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift and drag. 
Okay, and for a vertical version, what can we do? We could, we could just simply drag this. I'm gonna flip that to the side, get a little bit creative here. I'm gonna put that under there. Okay, see how this is gonna work. Then what I can do is, let's make a tab. So I'm gonna go M to get our rectangle tool, and I'm gonna drag a tab underneath here. I'm just going to drop it there, send it to the back, so Command Shift Open Square Bracket, send it all the way to the back, and let's obviously make that black. Okay, that could work. Yeah, that could work. Um, let's just round these two corners at the bottom here. So your Direct Selection tool, select those two and curve them as much as you want to curve them. I may tuck that in a little bit more, and obviously this needs to be a bit more centered. Okay. Okay, that is pretty cool. So for a vertical one, that's cool. Obviously, this could go white if we wanted. I think it actually looks quite cool as the, the goldy gray color. And if there was to go in a dark item, I'm just duplicating another one. So you see I selected everything, dragged it across, and we could put a white border around this. So go to your stroke, add that white border. Remember to set it to the outside. And let's just thicken that up. And now if I had to put a black block behind this, I'm gonna make a big, big black block and put it behind it send it to the back now that would work for in the, so now we've got our options we've got like our dark option if something's going in a light and then we've got a horizontal so two verticals and that would work both ways on a, a light and a dark so we just do that do that and put a black box at the back of that one and we can see how they're working on lights and darks there we go there's our logo. And there we have it. We've got the start of our logo. Works horizontally, works vertically, works on lights, works on darks. It's gonna be good. So basically what we're gonna be doing, we are gonna be taking it a little bit further in the next episode where we're gonna be selecting obviously items from the Printify store. We're gonna be creating some patterns. Now the cool thing about the Printify store is we don't even have to take any photos. If we design it right, we can upload it and it'll generate photos for us. And that's so cool quality photos that you can use on your website so we're going to be taking them selecting some items setting up a shop it's all coming up so make sure if you do set up the printify store in the meantime click that affiliate link below it's going to help out with these merch episodes it's all new to me or hopefully it's all new to you i'm going to see where it goes make sure to hit that subscribe button ding the bell hit a like button i'm running out of hands i'll catch you in the next one Peace.